Have you ever looked into a series and realized that the majority of the games are not main titles, but are mostly spin-offs? The Mana series, or Seiken Densetsu, is a victim to this. 11 games in the series, not including remakes or re-releases, and only 4 of them are mainline titles. Hey there. I'm Shinky, this is Shinky JRPGs, where we talk about anything and everything JRPG, and welcome to my review of Sword of Mana, the beginning of my Road to Visions of Mana review series which will consist of Sword of Mana, the original Secret of Mana, the original Trials of Mana, and the ever so wonderful and revered Dawn of Mana. Do you sense my sarcasm? It was truly what some would call an experience. Anywho, Sword of Mana, released on August 29th, 2003, is a reimagining of the first Mana title, Final Fantasy Adventure. But is it a good reimagining? Well, that's why I'm here to talk about Sword of Mana to find if it's even worth playing. Before we really get into the video, make sure to hit that like button and to subscribe. It really helps out the channel and tell me, if you've played Sword of Mana, what were your thoughts on it? Anyways, time to pop your corn, ice your drink, and get ready to hear about my honest experience of playing Sword of Mana. Now, you may have noticed that I called Sword of Mana a reimagining of Final Fantasy Adventure and not a remake. But hey, it tells the same story and gives a similar experience. It's definitely a remake. Well, yes, but no. While Sword of Mana follows the same basic story of Final Fantasy Adventure, it also deviates on several occasions and feels almost like an original story at times. Sword of Mana starts off with the game giving you the option to play as a boy or girl protagonist. So this is going to mean two different plots and give you replay value, right? Nope. Other than one or two major sections of the story, it's exactly the same, right down to the dialogue being identical, killing any real replay value or point to playing through the game a second time. As for what the story actually is, the game starts off with your chosen protagonist having a nightmare of the unchosen protagonist being killed. When you wake up, you're in a dungeon only to find out that you're a gladiator that fights monsters in a coliseum for Dark Lord's entertainment. Yes, that is the big antagonist's name, Dark Lord. So scary, so frightening, so terribly generic. Anyways, you manage to escape through the monster's entrance in the Colosseum, and you make your way to a cliffside. Dark Lord chases you down and corners you, eventually knocking you off the cliffside, causing you to tumble down to a field below, with seemingly no injuries, even though that fall would kill anybody else. Anyways, down below here you run into the protagonist you didn't choose at the beginning of the game, and you explain that you're on a mission to defeat Dark Lord as he murdered your sister when you were a child. After telling them this story, you are off on an adventure to collect the Sword of Mana so you can exact your revenge. After a bunch of adventures of traveling across the land, you find this Sword of Mana, which doesn't end up being an actual sword, but some feeling inside your heart, and then you kill Dark Lord. Yes, I realize this is almost every single anime plotline. It turns out, in the end, that Dark Lord was not the true villain and he was just misguided. A little bit more adventuring and you end up at the Temple of Mana with a dying Mana tree. You then kill the true villain, and the girl protagonist decides to sacrifice themselves and become the new goddess and tree of Mana. Honestly, the story isn't all that bad, which isn't necessarily all that bad for a game that was released in 1991. The reimagining, sort of Mana, adds a whole lot of flavor dialogue that really fleshes up the characters' personalities and tries to make characters a bit more memorable, but it really doesn't do very much. I found a lot of this dialogue very obviously added in as filler, as most of the characters didn't stand out to me even then. I guess you can't expect too much from a game that originated in 1991, where story was just an up-and-coming mechanic. Is Sword of Mana a fun game to play? Well, kinda. Sword of Mana is definitely an improvement on Final Fantasy Adventure. The game plays like a top-down Zelda title, where you run from screen to screen, attacking enemies with your weapon of choice or by casting spells. Sword of Mana has the option of eight different weapons, either a sword or staff, depending on your chosen character. On top of that, you have the option of using a bow, a scythe, a flail, your fists, a morning star, axe, or a spear, as well as eight elements of magic spells. 
Each weapon has one of three traits, either jab, dash, or slash. Enemies have weaknesses and resistances to each type of attack or elements. This is one of the most frustrating aspects of Sword of Mana's combat to me. Several times I would run into a new enemy and spend forever just trying to figure out what spell or weapon actually did damage to that enemy, as most weapons or spells would do zero damage, and I spent forever in a very slow menu. It results in you trying to attack with a weapon, it does no damage, so you open up the menu, open up the weapon menu, select the weapon you want, and then try the next weapon. Same with spells. You open up the menu, open up the element menu, and then you select the element of spell you want to use. It's very long, a very arduous trial and error process that got pulled very quickly. The weapons and spells are slowly earned throughout the story, and as you go on, you have more options to attack your enemies. Furthermore, the weapons and spells are also used to progress through dungeons as well. For example, the flail doubles as a hookshot kind of item to get you over gaps in designated spots, but you might need to use a specific spell to destroy a barrier. Additionally, Sword of Mana introduces classes that weren't in the original game. Every time you level up, you can choose one of six stat increase categories. Warrior, Monk, Sage, Magician, Thief, or Random. Classes are determined by what level ups you choose. For example, if you level up Warrior five times, you will become a fighter, and then you gain an additional five attack power when you're using a sword. It's a nice little addition, but because you're forced to use so many different weapons in the game, it kind of seems pointless near the end. I personally went with Dragon Master for the additional 25 attack power for Spears, plus bonus elemental damage. Sword of Mana adopted Legend of Mana's weapon forging system. About 50% through the game, you gain access to weapon forging and tempering, which yes, is item creation, the bane of my existence. What comes along with item creation? Materials thus making most every treasure chest just full of materials that you don't know what to do with. The weapon forging system would be nice if you didn't have seven weapons you had to cycle through all the time. Since you can't always use one weapon to kill all enemies, it becomes a grind to try and get good materials as drops from enemies, which are incredibly low rates of drops. I personally wish they didn't bother putting this mechanic into the game. Whatever happened to finding good old weapons in treasure boxes? I avoided it whenever possible, but eventually, I felt I had to create better weapons and armors as enemies start hitting harder and harder, and we're soaking up more and more damage. What about plot progression? This is another thing that got on my nerves. Now, I understand that Final Fantasy Adventure was released in 1991, and yes, it was normal to feel the need to talk to every single NPC hoping for a shred of information to figure out where to go next. This is exhausting. By 2003, we had a little bit better story structure and guidance for how to progress the plot. If you were able to change everything else in the game, why did you decide to leave this aspect the same Square Enix? It doesn't make any sense to me. I had to always have a guide at the ready because the amount of times I got lost was mind-boggling. It is not fun to try and find that one NPC to trigger the flag that allows you to progress. Okay. I'm sick of being negative now. This is the one section where Sword of Mana shines. For a Game Boy Advance game, Sword of Mana looks beautiful. The art style is very reminiscent of Legend of Mana, right down to the color scheme. I really appreciate that Sword of Mana doesn't just use repeating tile sets. Each place looks unique, and most of the rooms in the game are unique and hand-drawn. It looks absolutely gorgeous. The game is incredibly vibrant for a game on a handheld device. Me, myself, am a person that really loves bright and colorful environments, and Sword of Mana does it incredibly well. Given the limited color palette you're given to work with on the Game Boy Advance, I was incredibly impressed. And I can't forget all about the sprite work. The main character sprites look amazing. I'll never not appreciate how much effort goes into sprite work. Especially if you're going to be looking at these characters for 10 to 20 hours non-stop, they can't look bland. They'd totally ruin the experience of the game. However, most of all, I adored the monsters. This is where a lot of retro games struggle. Nothing is more frustrating than having every enemy look the same and bland. Luckily, that's not a concern with Sword of Mana. Every little rabbite, every skull warrior, and every choban hood look so detailed and adorable. Enemies do suffer from the recolored syndrome, 
but I'm willing to give it a pass because of how much work went into each type of enemy. Well done, Square Enix. Well done. Let's talk about the soundtrack. Mana has never disappointed with its soundtrack. From each and every game in the series, the soundtrack is an absolute high point. Kenji Ito absolutely nailed it with this game's soundtrack, especially with all the remixes from the original Final Fantasy Adventure. I did not once get tired of listening to the soundtrack of Sword of Mana. Each theme gave that feeling of adventure. The later dungeon theme, Seeking the Holy Sword, was one of my favorites, followed by Mission of Mana. Outside of the OST, the combat sounds actually feel impactful and really give some oomph to the gameplay. It's incredibly satisfying when you hit something with a sword and you hear that slashing sound effect, and then when you switch to a fist you can actually hear the thump, so you can tell that it's clearly a different kind of attack. Same goes for difference in elemental spells, having different hit sound effects. It's the small little features like that that make the game so much more engrossing and a better experience. So. Is Sword of Mana going to take you hundreds of hours to finish? Or are you going to be done it in one sitting? Well, it depends what you want to do with the game. I focused on main story, and the game took me about 15 hours to finish. However, the game does offer a lot of content, surprisingly, even if I didn't really focus on it. And Sword of Mana adds 50 side quests, ranging from collecting rare drops from enemies to fetch quests. The item creation can also take a bit of a grind as well, especially if you're out trying to get the best equipment in the game which is made from crystals, which can only be obtained by defeating dark versions of each monster, which will only show up by defeating 1000 of that specific monster. This can add a huge amount of playtime. I could see it easily hitting 50 plus hours if you wanted to do everything in the game. As for pacing, I talked about this earlier, but the pacing is frustrating. Every time you get to a new town, you end up getting into a funk of needing to talk to every NPC. It gets annoying quick, but once you're on your way in dungeons, the pacing isn't too bad at all. It's just those brief moments of don't leave any stone unturned that can get annoying. So what's the verdict? Should you play Sword of Mana, or should you play the original Final Fantasy Adventure? Sword of Mana, while not bad, is definitely not the original experience. I would fully suggest that you don't think of Sword of Mana as a replacement for Final Fantasy Adventure, but a different experience for the same game. If Final Fantasy Adventure is just too retro and jank for you, as I know those kinds of experience aren't for everyone, if you have access to a Vita or even a mobile device, Adventure of Mana might be the way for you. Sword of Mana, while a good game, has a lot of gameplay issues that stand in the way of it being a great game. It's not a bad game by any means. I enjoyed my time with it, however, it's not a game I would give high scores to. I'd hit it with an average 7 out of 10. Have you played Sword of Mana? Did you enjoy it? Do you agree with my review? Let me know your thoughts on the game in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and want more reviews, top 10s, and trailer reactions, make sure to hit that subscribe button, like the video, and share it around. It really helps out the channel. Anyways, that's my Sword of Mana review everybody. Thanks for tuning in, glad to have you here, and as always, have a wonderful day.